Hi there, I'm Jamie Dunbar, and welcome back to the Dunbar Dog Diaries, The Puppy Next Door. This is day two, video one. The first few weeks with your puppy are so important, we are breaking each day down into multiple videos. If you enjoy what you see here, please check out DunbarAcademy.com to learn more. If you're interested in real-time, live, online puppy classes, check out SeriousPup.com. We'll provide links to both of these websites in the description below. In our last video, I introduced Daisy to her tug toy and her collar. In this video, I'm going to do another play and training session with Daisy, and I'm going to work more on getting Daisy to come to me. I'm going to try to lure some sits, maybe some downs, and I'm going to do a little desensitization with her, trading treats for touches in an effort to get her to feel comfortable with me holding and handling her. All right, let's get to it. All right, we've got Daisy here for another day of training. Uh, this is going to be our second day. Yesterday was her first time here, so she was probably a little bit more inhibited. Uh, this morning, the, um, the owners have not been feeding her much food, so I think she's going to be a little more food motivated today and probably a little more comfortable in the space. So I think she's raring to go. Let's try some stuff out. Daisy, you ready to come out and say hi? Come on out. Yeah. Let me get a few treats and let her know I've got some. Yeah. Now I took her out to try and use the potty uh, a few minutes ago, but um, that was about 15 minutes ago. So I'm going to keep my eye on her. And uh, if I notice that she's looks like she's thinking about going pee, I'm going to say outside. I'm going to pick her up. I'm going to take her outside to the potty right away. See if I can get her to pee in her potty and not here. Daisy, come here. Yes. I think the first thing I want to try and do with her is just some short little comes, some short little recalls, so that, you know, she's follow me around. And anytime you're teaching a new skill, you don't really need to say the word right away. Once the puppy's reliably doing it, you can start introducing the word. Oh, I think she's pretty engaged. Wait till she gets a little distracted, look somewhere else, and then I'll say, Daisy, Daisy, come here. Yeah. Good girl. She's gonna go over there, sniff around a little bit, and then I'll say, Daisy, come here. Daisy, come here. Oh, yes, you got your little puppy hot. And a lot of times getting a puppy's attention, getting them to come here, little claps or tapping the ground is a really way to go. Good way to go. Good way to get their attention. And uh, sometimes little like fluttery fingers can be good too. I'm just gonna move around, keep having her come to me. Daisy, come here. Come here. Yeah, that time I didn't actually have any food in my hand. I'll reward her with the other hand. So right now we're using food as a lure and a reward. And as quick, pretty early on, you can start luring her with an empty hand. Actually, probably right at the beginning. I think yesterday I got her to come just using an empty hand, you know, because she might just want to come and say hi. She might be interested in you kind of as a social lure. Let's give it a shot. Daisy, come here. Daisy, come here. Yeah, good girl. Here you go. Yeah. Now a really good thing to start doing, I'll try this in a moment, with the, um, with the recalls is you add a sit at the end because you really, most of the time you want your dog to come, you want them to come and sit. You don't want them to come, run on by and go off to the next thing. Um, and so early on, it's good to start incorporating that come and sit. Now since this is a new skill, I'm gonna try and lure it with a uh, piece of food. So, Daisy, come, come here, come here. Good girl, can you sit? You can, yes you can, good girl. That's so fantastic. As you can imagine, it's gonna be very useful to have her come and sit and then stick with me for a moment, you know, so you can, uh, have a moment to collect your thoughts and a little bit of control. Let her explore and sniff some things. Good girl. 
there at all. Let's give that a shot again. Daisy, come here. Come here. Good. And sit. Sit. And sit. A little higher. A little back. Good. Go. Good girl. Yes. Yes. So she was starting to nibble on my fingers a little bit. She was like, why aren't you letting me have this treat? I came just like you wanted me to. And so pretty soon we'll start teaching her about off and take it with food. So much to teach a little puppy like this. But, you know, there's plenty of time to do it. And um, remember these training sessions, we want to keep them short initially. Oh, so <laughs> this is a good example. She's getting a little distracted by this floor mat we have, which we don't really want her playing with. Daisy, come here. Daisy. 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 We don't want to do that. No thanks. Let me see if I can get a... Uh... Oh, I've got one in my pocket. Let's get out a tug toy. Daisy, look at this. Oh, yes. Let's put that back. Actually, you know what? Let's even put this away. This is a great example. If you've got something in your environment, in the room, that your puppy's playing with, that they shouldn't be playing with, um, you want to redirect their attention away from it to an appropriate item like this tug toy right here. Oh, yeah. So this is a, a toy we do want Daisy to play with. And now we got her interested in this and she's not playing with the place, the, uh, the foot mat, the doormat. And this is something we can encourage. Yes, good girl. Yeah, there you go. And we put the uh, doormat away where she can't actually get to it. And that's where... You know, for these first few sessions, it really helps to be in a puppy-proofed room where there are hopefully zero or maybe just a few items that would be inappropriate for her to play with. Um, if you don't have a room like this, which is very sparsely decorated, as you can see, it's our training studio, uh, using an X-Pen to create a limited area, um, a con confined area with, with nothing in it, is a good idea. Yeah, easy. Come here. Come here. Come here, Daisy. Oh, you want to come here? Oh, you're pretty interested in that, huh? Let's see. You want a treat? Good girl. We'll play with this again in a second. There you go. Good. You want this back? Oh, wow. So this is another good way to get Daisy to follow me and come. Instead of using a treat, Use a toy. So let Daisy get distracted. Ah! Are you wondering where the toy went? And then I'll say, Daisy, come here. Daisy, Daisy, look. Oh, remember this? Good girl, yes. Urgh. Eventually, I'll want to get to the point where um, I can ask Daisy off with this toy. I can ask her to take it. And I asked her to release it, but that's a long way from today. Right now we're getting her excited to play with the toy, excited to play with me, and doing some you know, early skills like come and take it. As you can see, if we just left her with this, she'd be gnawing on it, and eventually she would destroy it. And that's not what we want. This is a toy to play with, with me. Yes. Good girl. All right. Thank you. Good girl. Yeah. I'm just going to be boring for a little while, let her get distracted again. Oh, so I think she's going back there seeing if she can find that doormat again. Daisy, come here. Come here. Ooh, yes, good girl. Daisy, can you sit for me? Sit. Good. Good. I like that sit. Let's see. We tried this yesterday. We'll try it again today. I'm not certain we're going to get it, but can we get it down? Let's go to sit first. The easiest way into it down is sit then down. Yeah. Ooh, I'm going to put it under my hand. Let's try that sit again. Sit. 
it back and down and down. Yeah. Oh, you were so close. You were. Yeah. Down. Eventually, you'll have these position changes like clockwork. But this is our first time. Okay, I'll take this sit. 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 There you go. Good puppy. Good puppy. How are you doing? All right, maybe I'll do a little bit of following and then we'll put Daisy away for her nap. Daisy, you follow me? Ooh, yes. Yeah. 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 Ooh. Ooh, ooh. Sorry, Daisy. You all right there? Oh, you got to be so careful walking around with a little puppy underfoot, especially doing a following game like this. Ooh. Good. Oh, that was good following. Yes, let's have a good tug to celebrate. Yes. It's good to have your puppy really like to stay close to you. You know, it's, it's easy to do with a puppy. But as they get older, they'll get more interested in other things in the environment, and they'll be, you know, more confident, and they'll be more likely to just kind of go off and do their thing. So we want to keep, kind of keep playing with Daisy and keeping her interested in us. You know, so we let her go off and explore, check out some things, and then we want to keep practicing, bringing her back to us, bringing her attention back to us. Uh, because as long as we can get her attention and get her back to us, we have pretty good control. Oh, okay, let's see if I can get this toy back. I'll trade it for a treat. What do you think, Daisy? Here. There you go. Oh, yeah, there you go. Treat. How about another one? Yeah. All right, now I'm gonna get Daisy ready for a little settle in her crate. But before I do that, I want to do a little bit of um, just a little bit of handling, a little bit of mellow handling. So I've got a handful of treats. I'm gonna pick her up right here. I'm gonna have her in my lap. I'm gonna feed her a treat. Yeah. Yeah. I'll touch this little ear. Yeah. I'll feed her another treat. Mm-hmm. I touch this other little ear. Yeah. Feed her a treat. Touch this little paw. Boop, 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 boop. These little nails. We're gonna have to trim these nails. So we want Daisy to be totally comfortable with handling every part of her body. There we go, like that. Other little paw. Oh, she's going for the ones in the fist. There we go. That's the one I want you to have. Now I'm sitting here on the ground, so I can't drop her too far. Don't wanna. I want to drop the little puppy. There you go. There's another one. Going to get the back paw. You know, puppies have four paws. So we're looking at this paw. Looking at this paw. Trading touches for treats. Rubbing your little tummy. Yeah. And this is my first time handling her, so I'm going to keep it pretty short. You know, I'm giving lots of treats. I want her to be pretty happy with this. And now she's not struggling. I don't want to let her go when she's struggling. I want to let her go when she's being nice and calm. I want to say, there you go. Yeah, because I don't want her to uh, learn that struggling is what to do if she doesn't want to be held. I want her to be totally relaxed. Oh, that's perfect. You wanted to come back? You wanted to come back to Jamie? That's nice. You want another treat? Let's see. What do you, what do you think about this? Lie down a little bit on your back. Whoop. Oops, so she's squirming now. I'm just going to gently hold her. Good. And release her. I wanted to wait because she was squirming a little bit. She was not quite ready for, for lying on her back. There you go. And let's see. Touch your little tail. Little under, under the undercarriage. There you go. And here's another touch. Another treat. All right. Well, that was a pretty good session, wasn't it, Daisy? 
So we're gonna go back inside of our crate now for a little nap. And don't you worry, I won't be going far. And we will do another play session soon to work on some more exciting stuff. Let's see, do you have a chew toy in there with anything good in it? Let's take a look. Let's see. Oh yeah, this one's all empty. Have you gotten better at emptying out your chew toy? I think you are getting the hang of it. Here you go, here you go girl. Down in here. Ooh. I'm just gonna sprinkle a couple there around to get you started. All right. So that was pretty short, you know, I think that was 10, 15 minutes or so. Now she's back in her crate. I'm gonna leave in, her in here for one hour. And of course, you know what I'm gonna do, set my timer. And then in uh, one hour, we'll take her to the potty. We will hopefully reward her for peeing and pooping. And then we'll do some more training. So thanks for watching. Okay, so that was our first play and training session of day two. When you have your puppy in a confined area with limited distractions, it's really easy to get their attention and keep their focus on you, which is what you want when you get started. There was really only one inappropriate item in the area that I didn't want her to play with. And she found it, the floor mat. So I redirected her to her tug toy and put the floor mat away. This was a lot of fun. Now let's see what our expert has to say. Hello, puppy expert, or should I say dad? Hi, dad. <laughs> yeah, expert. <laughs> How's it going? Good to see you. It's going well, thank you very much. All right, so you've just watched um, my, let's see, the first training session from my second day with Daisy. What do you think? What, what went well? What could be improved? Well, there was a lot there. I mean, you did a lot in uh, 15 minutes. Um, so, I made some notes, um, but first, are you ready for this? I am, I, I can take criticism well. So, um, I wouldn't call it criticism. I would say tips to improve. Oh, I take tips on what well is as well. Already a good job. I mean, same impression again. The, the overall feel is you're here with the puppy, you know, you love it, you got your hands on it, the puppy's engaging with you, you're engaging with the puppy, um, but loads and loads of tips. First of all, recall. Um, you had some nice distance recalls. Here is your dialogue, okay? Daisy, come here, come here. Oh, would you like a treat? Um, here would be my dialogue. Daisy, come. Good girl, good girl, good girl, always a good girl. And sit, boom, tree. So, yeah, you've got to praise when she's coming to you. All right. Two, um, you then added in the sit. Um, I would not teach sit at the end of a recall. I would not teach sit during following or a heel. Why? The danger is if it doesn't work. It's an absolute disaster if Daisy did beautiful long recalls like she did, and then she doesn't sit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then she runs off. So we practice them separately. We've got to get an absolutely lightning sit when Daisy is standing. So from the stand to the sit, and when she's moving. The best exercise to do this are very short, one step. Come sit, come sit, come sit, come sit. And what's neat about that is we can go, come sit, kibble, come sit, kibble, and then come sit, come sit, kibble, and then come sit, come sit, come sit, kibble. yeah, good. So the point is that sit has to be absolutely automatic. See, I'm looking at the, uh, to the future, uh, to watching these videos. In That's why I'm so time. excited to talk with you. You can see the future. And this is just my opinion. I mean, it happens to be based on about 120,000 puppies we've had in class. I know what's gonna happen with this little dog. It is going to, it, it, it's, it, oh, good Lord. It is going to be doing whirlies, or what did you call them? Zoomies, Zoomies. nonstop. That's why you need that quick sit and a solid stay. 
okay? So I would practice the short, come sit, come sit, come sit. I would also practice on a training table. Okay, these things have legs about that long. And the ones that we use here, they're called, I think, Blue Nine K9 or, or something like that. They're short, very solid training tables. Um, you've got to make something that doesn't wobble. If it wobbles, the dogs freak and don't like it. Once we get up on the training table, it does a number of things. It gets the dog focused because he really knows if he's on the table or off it, you know. So he can't be wandering away now doing this stuff. So up on the table, you've got a dog with little legs. They're very difficult to teach down, as you found out in this session, and you succeeded. But it, it takes a long time. It's not like working with a Labrador. You meet the lab, you say, hello, sit down, sit, stand down. They just, it's prototypical dog. With little legs, the down from the stand is very difficult. So we try to teach down from the sit. Well, what if we're trying to teach that and then the dog stands up? It's even more difficult. So I would work with positions on a training table. Okay, so we got to have that sit down. Now you are absolutely right. Let's add sit to the end of the recall, but you don't add it in there till the dog knows what sit means. Because we do not want these lovely recalls that you're getting now, um, not only long, but pretty prompt. I mean, she's engaged with you. She's paying attention. That ain't going to last, Jamie, unless she's trained. This is now. In that room, I mean, look at it, big room. There's nothing in it apart from a fence protecting a cameraman, an empty couch, and you. So, of course, she's focused on you. Okay, so training is what will preserve her you know, joy for life and her speed for doing things in a way that is fulfilling you know, and happy for you too. So we've got to have that lightning sit. Then we add it on the end of the recall. So we go, come sit. Now, a big thing that's happening here, we, we, we mentioned, I think, week one, the fact she likes tug, it's a godsend. It's amazing because she doesn't really like the kibble yet. And I don't think you made it clear last, uh, yesterday we filmed that you're using kibble. You actually said treats at one point, but this is kibble from part of the dog's normal daily ration. Mm -hmm. We have to right. teach the dog to thoroughly love it. The way we do that is we only hand feed, we never use treats, we only hand feed kibble, so kibble becomes a treat in the dog's eyes. But if I ask Daisy, what do you prefer, kibble or tug? Tug, please. So we've got to use the tug to amp up the kibble and the sit. And so the routine to use with her is Daisy. Come, sit, kibble, tug. Come, sit, kibble. Come, sit, come, sit, kibble. Come, sit, come, sit, come, sit, kibble. Come, sit, kibble, tug. And so then the tug, that's what she really wants. So now she'll come quickly, sit quickly, and eat kibble quickly. All right. Now, here's a big one. I see it happening already. Um, what the advice you're giving is different from what you're doing. You've said now about three times over, the tug toy is an interactive toy. It's your toy. You keep it for the two of you to play together. If we add it up now, and, and you can go through it, and can't because we filmed it, we can count the seconds. How many seconds was she playing tug with you versus how many seconds did she have the tug toy while you were uh, talking to camera? The tug toy is becoming hers. We don't want that. The tug toy is yours. Oh, okay. okay. So I was, I was thinking like, you don't want to leave the dog unsupervised with it, but really you don't want to even nope. let her have it without me holding it. Nope. She can win it for a couple of seconds okay, and then run away from you. That's okay. I like that stuff on cue. I say, let me chase you. Let me chase you. Then I stand still, call her back. Come here, sit. Thank you. Take the tug toy. That has to be able to happen for you to maintain the power of the tug. Otherwise it just becomes my toy. And I don't like Jamie 
intervening in my game. Because so should always- I not should I not let her win and take the toy away from me unless I am confident that I can get her to come to me? I would probably do it later on in training. Once you know you can take the tug toy easily from her. Daisy, sit. Thank you. Show her the food. Thank you. You got the tug toy in your pocket. I like to have pockets for this. Why? Otherwise, it's in this hand behind your back. Now, you've only got one hand to train the dog, and we're probably going to have a bit of kibble in that. So you're kind of like handless. So tug toy out of sight. It's why I, you, people have asked, why do you always wear a jacket, Ian? Ah, tug toy. Beer. <laughs> you know. Okay, so my hands are free. All right, so I don't let that tug toy degrade. You play together and you take it away and then sit, kibble, tug toy back. So she shouldn't require a piece of kibble every time she sits, but I wanted to sit and get the kibble so you can follow that with the tug toy. So that's gonna amp up the value of eating kibble as well as the sit, okay? But keep the tug toy on you. Later on, yes, we can let her win with it and we can play lots of fun games there. Um, I love the game of tag. Tug to me, when you have an adolescent dog, it becomes tag. The dog comes, sits, you say off, take it, and you tap the dog on the head. So the dog's in a sit stay. When you tap him on the head with the tag toy now in his mouth, you chase the dog all over. And then periodically you stand still, rover come, sit, thank you. Okay? Mm-hmm. For the time being, it's a tug toy, it's yours, you keep it. Okay? Third advice, I know this is a lot to take in, isn't it? Well, it's because you did a lot. Um, third advice, handling. All right. You, I would sit on the couch. I'll put my camera way back here so you can see. This is Brown Dog, by the way, um, who you know well. He made a cameo appearance once. He's a little too big for the camera, but Brown Dog. Um, you need two hands to handle a dog. You really do for safety, okay? And this hand is always, my thumb is through the dog's collar. So the dog can't spring with his hind legs or push away from him. I've got him. So you need a table, which has a little jar of treats, the dog's collar, the dog's leash, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So handling, when I pick up the dog, I usually pick them up like this, I let their dog, little legs dangle, I have thumb over each forearm, and I bring him close to my body. All right, so we got him. I'll be petting the dog the whole time. This is really important because this is how the dog bonds. Like, oh God, I love being close to Ian. He always scratches my ears and then, boom, I switch hands. This thumb is now in the collar. And now I'm scratching this ear. I'll flick the ear up so you can see. When the dog's calm, they're rather than doing this, here's what a lot of people do. They pick the puppy up because they want the puppy's face. Then they try and lay the dog down in their lap. Dogs don't like that. In fact, it's why we have the old alpha rollover because dogs don't like it. So now we're going to bully them in. You will go down. I'll show you who's boss. So rather than that, I let them go down like this. I pick them up, I pull them in, I start petting, and then I let them gently slip down, see, until they're lying in my lap because my legs are close together and I've got them here. At that point, I take both legs, got his little legs, and I start to give him a belly rub. Now, when we rub the chest, the dogs love it. Rub the belly too, but you'll watch the little dog's leg when I rub the belly, his leg will go Bloop. That's him saying, I'm a worm. I want to be friendly. You're the boss. So by rubbing his belly and tickling by the ghoulies like that, his leg's there. And what he's saying over and over is, you're the boss. I love you. I would never want to bite you. You get it? So you're getting him nice and calm, but holding him, making him more secure like this, and he's in your lap. 
Then we can turn him round. I've still got the collar with my thumb. I never let go of it. I don't want a little dog jumping up and then crashing on the floor. And then we start to do the paws. And the paws, as you were doing, hind paws. I love seeing that. You know, again, the ghoulies, woo, -hoo -hoo. okay, and the ears and so on. So I think sitting down in the couch would be much easier. And if they fall off, well, couch that side, couch that side, you know, it's only if they drop off the front that they're, they're in danger. It's very difficult to sit on the floor and handle a dog unless you're leaning against the wall and your eggs are out in front of you. Bring them into your chest. Get him calm. And I'd like to see more footage of massage gently. Oh, yeah, his chest and he's falling asleep. The pup is saying, man, this is good. Cool. I want the dog like a rag doll. And this, this I know Kelly is. She's really big about this. You know, producing a totally handleable dog. The dog is just lying there like he's in a canine spa, okay? So, so they're the, the three big things. Um, uh -huh. Praise the dog when it comes, have that lightning sit, but don't teach the sit on the end of a long recall, mm -hmm. get the sit, then add them onto the recall. The tug is yours, okay? Um, don't let the dog run off with that and chew it. Have a good, it's okay running with it. Yeah. Well, it comes back eventually, but no, having time with the tug on its own, bad news. And then the handling. The handling is everything. And, you know, even as the puppy gets older, you can pull him out the crate, sit down, and just have a little handling before you've even gone out to pee. Because he's calm, you know, mm -hmm. and he's still sleepy, hasn't yawned or stretched yet. The other thing is, it gives a great photo ops. Oh, yes, look at that. And look, oh, my face is hidden because my face is ugly, but what's in the picture? <laughs> okay. <laughs> One extra little tip. You got the puppy like this, he's much more secure, hands on his chest, fingers over his legs, stop and pouring, whoops, pouring at your face and taking your glasses off like that, okay? You can bring him up here and keep his head close to you so he can't, you know, put his head, then just blow. And then they can sniff your breath and they kind of like, that's a great way to get the dog's attention, you know. But be aware, they got very sharp teeth. So you always want your head close to his ear so he can't turn around quickly and nail your face. And lots of nice hugging. But um, otherwise, it was cool. I think um, you had the puppy in a very big area, which um, makes for a lot of distractions. We had the carpet, you know. Uh, you know, if you're going to have a big area, either it's going to be totally dog-proofed or... Whenever they go for a distraction, like a cushion, a carpet, curtains hanging down, out comes the tug or chew toy. So get your toy and use the words. Okay, use the words. Mm -hmm. So as soon as they're on the carpet, don't say, oh, he's found a little distraction here. It's a carpet. What should we do with the carpet? Let me think. Um, I will distract him. Oh, oh, better yet. I'll fold it up and put it away. You know, it's good you going through this thought process. That's it's really cool. I would have just said, chew toy or puppy, come, sit, tug. Mm -hmm. So it, it's good. You, you've well, got that, a... that is why you are the puppy expert. And that's why <laughs> that's why I'm here talking to you. Oh, I wouldn't say that. I would call Kelly the puppy expert. Um I, I could say, yeah, the puppy training expert in the aspect of training dogs to be friendly with people and teaching dog on-demand reliability for off-leash manners. I mean, yeah, there's certain things I really like, but I wouldn't say I'm a puppy expert, no. Um, so it's coming along well. Well, I, yeah, and, I really uh, appreciate that. That's some very useful advice that I think I can put, put into practice pretty quickly. I hope so, because I shall be watching tomorrow.
<laughs> Sounds good. Well, we have we have one more video for you that I already filmed. Um, so obviously, I will not be able to utilize your advice for uh, the second training session of day two, but uh, but the advice will soon be put into place. So thank you very much, Dad. Thank you. I really appreciate it. We'll talk again soon. All righty. All right. Bye bye. Later. Oh wait. Oh. Bye, brown dog. Thanks for visiting. You're so good, so, Jeremy. So good, Jeremy. You're like a rag doll. It's amazing. Yeah, he's so calm. He's so cute. Yeah. All right. Anyway. Bye, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Now we've got a lot of good feedback to start making use of. First, praising the recall while it's happening. If I ask Daisy for a recall and she does come, I'm going to praise and encourage her the whole way. Second, I'm not going to ask for a sit at the end of a long recall until her sits are very reliable because I want to make sure I can reward the successful recall. Third, I want to get the sits to be very quick and reliable, and to do that, very short, one-step come sits are the way to go. And I'm going to look into getting a training table to practice position changes. Fourth, when it comes to the tug toy, I'm not going to let Daisy take the toy by herself just yet going to wait until I can reliably get her to release the toy before I let her win it and take the toy. And finally, with handling, I'm going to pick her up with her back to me and my hands under her front legs, hook my thumb through her collar, and then sit with her on a couch where I can easily reach a bowl full of her kibble and work on getting her to just melt down into my lap and I'll rub her belly and get her to totally relax. <laughs> wow, that is a lot to work on. This is why I'm so glad to have an expert watch me actually work with her and give me feedback. The next video is going to be my second session with Daisy from our second day of training together. So I won't be able to make use of any of Ian's tips just yet, but I'll be trying to incorporate them in day three. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in video two of day two. Thanks for watching this video. If you'd like to learn more about dog training and behavior, make sure you visit DunbarAcademy.com to check out our selection of courses, many of which are completely free. If you'd rather watch more of our videos here on YouTube, just click the links to the right. And if you want to follow us on social media, everything you need is directly below. As always, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and don't forget to click the bell for notifications.